Being a curvy model is that at that time, you only were in basically one category. If you hate your body, then watch this, Ashley Graham's eye. I was 12 and scouted. My first modeling job was at 13, and I began traveling. Before I finished high school, I was shooting major commercials and traveling. At 17, I graduated and moved to New York, where I was surrounded by catwalks, catalogs, and casting calls. I was a plus-sized model full-time. I was dubbed the fat model. So it's something you have to know. Understanding quiet time, meditation, and prayer takes a lot of inner work. So it'll get me by. I'll rise. I'll be sad. My mind may be cloudy. But that quiet moment in the morning is vital to me. So that's been a constant for me. I don't have to say everything constantly, but develop your own affirmation and write it on your mirror, paper, or type it out. If you enjoy typing, you can incorporate it and improve it through time, which is vital. Body type and clothing is a label fit. Just because I'm a size US 16, weigh over 200 pounds and frequently wear lingerie doesn't mean I need to continually discuss self-confidence. I don't need to talk about confidence because I'm a big girl. Why don't we ask the same of slimmer women? It's not always about the outside, but the inside too. Be encouraged as you transition into a new normal, a pandemic, or a new body, a tough body. It's all yours. Consider your body acceptance if you don't have positivity. You only have one body. Be kind. Remember that the kids in your neighborhood are watching. It's also crucial for parents to understand that their kids watch how you treat and talk to your body. This is how they'll treat and talk to their bodies. Don't forget that. I was 12 years old and scouted in a mall. At 13, I signed with major modeling agency and was traveling the world. I was shooting big campaigns and before I even graduated high school, I had been to multiple different countries. At 17, I graduated and moved to New York. For me, understanding that quiet time in the morning and meditation and prayer is like so, it is the thing that will get me through the day. I will wake up, I will feel terrible, but that quiet time in the morning, whatever you choose to do with it, that is your time. I knew that it always affected men. I didn't always get why it affected men. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was very candid in the book about, you know, being 12 years old and having a family friend make me touch him. And that was an eye-opening experience that my body was a sexual part of, of being a woman. What's still so frustrating about the conversations that we're having today that I was still having 20 years ago when I started was, how do you feel confident in your body? How do you dress for your body? And it's the label conversation. It's all about how I look and how I feel. While most kids are going through their self-discovery stage in college, my self-discovery stage was in the midst of catwalks, catalogs, and casting calls. I was working as a full-time plus-size model. Back in Nebraska, I was known as the fat model, the girl who was pretty for a big girl. You have to know it in yourself, right? And it's one of those, it's a lot of inner work. It is so precious to me. So that has some, been something that has been a staple for me. Like whatever those things are for you so that you can embody it. And they can change over time too, which I think is very important. Then that lead led into dating and having a boy break up with me because I wouldn't have sex with him before we were married. And also he told me I was going to be too fat um, later in life. So he was too afraid to be with me. He said, I want to break up with you because I'm afraid you're going to be as fat as my mom. And then also he said, and you're not going to have sex with me. Sexuality and, and being a curvy girl went hand in hand. Just because I am a size US 16 and just because I'm over 200 pounds and just because I am in lingerie a lot doesn't mean that I need to have this constant conversation about what it takes to feel so confident within myself. Just because I'm a big girl doesn't mean that I need to have this confidence conversation. Like Affirmations, I mean, I say them in the car before I walked up here. I was yes. like, I am bold, I am brilliant, I am beautiful, I am worthy, and Jay and I are gonna have a great conversation. You know, it's just in me now, so I don't have to recite it constantly, but everybody's affirmations are different, just to wrap up the affirmations, but everybody's are different. And once you make yours and you say it, write it on your mirror, write it on a paper, like actually physically write it, type it out if you love to type. 
then I was like, I'm a big girl and I don't know how to have a relationship with men. It just, I didn't have that strong a male connection with my father. And it kind of turned into this like, okay, sex, body, and then food. And I was like, where do I find love? Yeah. And right there in front of the mirror was where I really needed it and where I could find it, but I didn't get it until later.